All right, books open to page 162. For homework, you did just two problems here on page 162. Those were 8 and 10. And then over on page 166, you did 1 through 5, which we will get to in a moment. I actually wanted you to solve the triangle oh, if it had one. Right. Not just tell how many. Now, if there was no triangle, you write no triangle. Yeah, so careful, careful reading the directions there. You kind of skimmed them and misunderstood the directions. Uh, good, all right. So uh, number eight was um, they gave us side C, angle A, angle B. What combination is that, Quentin? The, uh, sorry. Well, if there were a match, yes. But remember, there's, it's C, A, and B, so there's no match, which means the side actually falls in between them. But it doesn't matter which of the two it is, because anytime there's two angles and one side, we're always going to use law of sines. There we go. And uh, the first thing we'll always do for angle, side, angle, or side, angle, angle, for that matter, using the law of sines, is we always find what first, Jane? We find the missing angle first. Right, we're always going to find the missing angle first. So we've got two of the angles. We're missing angle C. We should have found that first, just subtracting from 180 to get what, Chris? 55. 55 degrees. Then once we've got that, we've got our C ratio complete, 160 over the sine of 55. We can use the complete ratio to finish, for instance, the B ratio. We knew angle B was 75 degrees. We can find side B to be how big, Ethan? Uh, 50 degrees. I think you, I think so. Side B. What did you calculate side B, little b, on number eight? I had that as 75. Well, angle B is 75. What is side B? Help him, Quentin. 190. 190. Oh, yeah. Okay. So for redemption, Ethan, they also gave us angle A was 50 degrees. Well, if we take the given, the essentially given complete ratio C to angle C, since 55 degrees was super easy to find, we can find side A to go with the angle A. What was side A, Ethan? Uh, that, uh, 150. 150. Again, we've got just the two sig figs there. Um, did we get all three of those answers correct? Good to go on side, angle, side, angle. All right, number 10 was another angle, side, angle. They gave us a side A, and then they gave us angles B and C. First thing we had to find, of course, here back to Ethan was? Uh, the other angle. Which was? It was. Uh, they gave us B and C, so that means we're finding angle uh, a. a. There we go. What did you find angle A to be? 18 degrees, good. And then once we've got side A and angle A, there's a completed ratio. We can use that completed ratio to find the missing side B. Chris? Um, missing side B is 149.7. Yes, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. 149.7 is correct. And then the missing side C, to go with the angle C, we found to be what, Jamie? 256.9. Good, 256. Point nine. Did we get all three of these answers correct on 10? Now, with a side-angle-angle combination, that would be, for instance, if they gave you side B, one of the two angles would have to be angle B. And then the other angle could be either A or C. It really doesn't matter. Let's just go with C. Well, that means you're going to actually literally start with a complete ratio to begin with, both actually given versus calculated but an easy calculation. Okay? Questions on angle-side-angle or side-angle-angle? using law of signs. All right, turn over then to page 166, where we did one through five, and we began talking about another case in addition to angle, side, angle, side, angle, angle, but this one was kind of a weird one, Jamie. Um, well, it's just, he, um, he had to look at the angle and see that it was less than 90. Well, you're getting ahead of me. What case are we talking, did we talk about yesterday? Um, Two days ago, we talked about angle, side, angle, and side, angle, angle. Then yesterday in our last lesson, we began talking about... Side, side, angle. Side, side, angle. And I, I gave this a nickname. I say I gave it. The book gave it a nickname. What do we call side, side, angle? The ambiguous case. The ambiguous case. And uh, what does ambiguous mean again, uh, Quentin? <laughs> Nice hair, Quentin. Yeah. Is, it alive? <laughs> is, it, is it alive? Like, you don't know exactly. Do I actually mean nice hair, Quentin? Or do I 
I mean, I don't like his hair, right? Like you could, there's two multiple meanings. That's what ambiguous means, multiple meanings. Um, hard to interpret, right? And side side angle is just that because you give this information. I mean, you're given three things, you're given three things. It looks just like this, but given three things, do I always get a triangle from side side angle class? No. And in fact, in one rare instance, I could actually end up with two triangles. Okay, so side side angle, call it the ambiguous case, but if a triangle is formed, what will I use to solve a side side angle triangle class? I'll still use the law of sines if a triangle is formed. Now, I mentioned this yesterday. Your saving grace is if it is a no triangle thing and you just missed it, the math will tell you no triangle. The math, the calculator will give you an error when you try to solve the triangle and you'll realize, oh, never mind, this is a no triangle. The two triangle your calculator can't take care of for you. You've got to figure that one out for yourself. So my recommendation was always determine, do I even get a triangle before I go to the law of sines? Make sense? Now, the easy angles to me are the obtuse and the right angles. Because if a triangle has an obtuse angle, if a triangle has a right angle, the side across from the obtuse or the side across from the right angle always has to be the biggest side. And if it isn't the biggest side, you ain't got a triangle. Make sense? So for obtuse or right angle, the opposite side, meaning opposite the angle, has to be greater than the adjacent. If it's less than or even equal to, you just put no triangle for your answer and you're done. Which is kind of nice. It's not nice to have to do all this thinking, but man, it's awfully quick and easy to solve a problem. I've had times in my class where I would put a problem on the board and some students realized it was no triangle. Put the pencils down. Got other kid over there, five minutes later, he just now finishing up. And then he realizes it's a no triangle. And you sure hate to waste all that time. Do you just like sitting over there and just laughing? <laughs> Pretty much. All right, because I'm evil like that. Now, the acute angle is the one that's a little bit obnoxious. For the acute angle, does a side across from an acute angle have to be bigger? No. It could be bigger than one of the other sides. It could be the same as another side. It could be smaller than another side. You just never know. But we do know this. If the opposite is bigger or is equal to the adjacent, we always get a triangle. If it's equal to, remember, it's going to be an isosceles triangle. It's when the opposite is less than the adjacent. And that equals what, class? Two triangles. Not necessarily. More work. It equals more work. Because now you have to do a second test. You already ran the opposite compared to adjacent test, but if opposite comes out smaller on an acute angle, it's like, uh-oh, now i got to do another test. The another test is to compare the opposite not just to the adjacent, but to compare the opposite class to the adjacent times the sine of theta. And if the opposite is exactly equal to adjacent sine theta, remember we said that's that perfect length for that side to just come down and touch. So you're going to get what if it does? One triangle. One triangle. It'll be a right triangle that'll be formed. But we said if it's less than that perfect length, you get... No, you get it can't get a triangle, right? It needs to be that long to make a triangle. So if it's smaller, you get no triangle. And if it's bigger... We showed, okay, so let me show this again. So we got this adjacent side to our angle theta, and then we have a shorter line, right? Here the opposite is clearly less than adjacent, right? But if it's equal to adjacent sine theta, we get this right triangle. If it's smaller than that, we got nothing. And if it's longer than this, obviously that means we're gonna have to push it out, but we could push it out here, to form this triangle, or here to form that triangle. So if it's bigger than adjacent sine theta, again, still less than adjacent, but bigger than adjacent sine theta, that's the two triangle case that we'll get to in a little bit. Questions on these things we talked about yesterday. Make sure you're studying over at those notes. Let's take a look at the homework then that you did. Number one, um, they give you two sides, one angle. Now, for now, you know that means side, side angle. But a word of caution, side angle, side is coming. And side angle, side is handled very differently from side, side angle. 
we know that this is not side angle side because one of the sides matches. Again, if this is angle C, the opposite is side C. So if there is a match, the match is the opposite. If they said side A, side B, and angle C, well, then we know sides A and B are the two that make up angle C. This would be side angle side. We don't even use the law of sines for that. We'll get to that later. But for now, of course, we knew it was side side angle. How many of you recognized we have an acute angle on number one? Did we recognize that opposite is less than adjacent on number one? So right off the bat, side side angle, acute, opposite less than adjacent, what does it equal? More work. We have to now compare opposite class to what? Uh, adjacent sine uh, sin theta. Adjacent sine theta. Wait, opposite's not less than adjacent. I'm sorry, opposite's not less than adjacent. I'm going to rewind that on the video. Opposite's way bigger than adjacent. I'm sorry, opposite's huge. Okay, never mind, it doesn't even more work. That's happy. I was like, man, why did they do that to you on the first problem? Opposite's way bigger than adjacent. I'm thinking backwards here. And if opposite's bigger than adjacent class, we always get a triangle. So that means if we're going to get a triangle, we can use the law of sines. So we're going to use the law of sines, so we're going to say that A over the sine of angle A, whatever that is, equals B, whatever that is, over the sine of angle B, whatever that is, equals side C, which is our 21, over the sine of angle C, which is 60 degrees. And this is what we should have done. So Ethan, you're going to go and do it along with me. The rest of them should have already done this question. So I got it right, but I'm just wondering, how do, you, how do you know that C is the opposite and A is If it's the matching letter, it is opposite. As I showed here, whatever the angle is, the opposite side always shares the name. So you identify which one's opposite, it's got to be the match. The mismatch is the adjacent. Opposite's big, adjacent is small. Yep. All right, now then, we go here. What's the first thing we're going to solve for? Sine A. Well, technically just no, it's A, right? We've got one complete ratio given because there's an opposite with an angle. And then there's a side. So we're going to finish the ratio, but we're going to finish it down here. When we cross multiply, that means we're going to have to multiply 7 times the sine of 60. What do we do with the 21? Divide that. But what you're going to get on your calculator is the sine of A. I just want A. What do I have to do at the end? Take the arc sine. Take the arc sine. So Ethan, doing that at your seat if you haven't already done it. I'm going to do it now as well. 7 times the sine of 60, divide out the 21, take the arc sine. Yes, good, I'm in degree mode. What do we get for angle A class? 16.73. Good, 16.77, blah, 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 degrees. Now, their angle is one sig fig, but I said we're always going to have at least two sig figs, so we'll call our angle 17, 17 degrees. However, I'm going to use this exact number to get what next? the other angle, angle B. So the second thing we'll get is angle B. Well, I've got 60 degrees here. I've got 16.77 degrees here. So total, I've got 76.77 degrees. That leaves how many degrees for angle B? This is annoying. How many sig-figs am I allowed? Normally, you say one. We're going to say at least two. But what is that with two sig-figs? 1.0. Uh, E2, right? 1.0 E2 degrees. And that's just nasty looking, but whatever. However, I'm going to use 103.22 degrees to get my last side, which is side B. So my last thing I'm solving for is here at side B. I would go back to your given ratio here, and we'll take the sine of the 103.22, multiply that by the 21, divide out the sine of 60. And what do we get for side B? 23.65. And um, two sig figs or three, so we have to go with three. two again, smallest number of sig figs, which is uh, 24. 24, no units given. So my answers are angle A, 17, angle B, 1.082 degrees, and side B, 24. How many of all three of those correct on one? Only Chris. All right, Jamie Quentin questions mean, first. Mean the rounding. The rounding. Same. Okay, so we got the idea just rounding things wrong. And then Ethan, you did it just now. Did you get those answers as you redid it with me? No. All right, questions on this. Well, let's go to number two. And um, I notice I've got a number two class. I've got two 
sides A and B and one angle. And there is a match, which means I have side side angle. What kind of angle do I have? Obtuse. Now, I actually like obtuse because there's only one way it can work. The opposite has got to be greater than adjacent. Which side is the opposite? A. Is A bigger? Oh, so that means my answer is just no triangle. Okay, let's go to number three. Um, I have two sides and one angle. That means, and there's a match. So that means I have side side angle. And um, I look at the type of angle. What kind of angle do we got? Ah, I like right angles as well as I do obtuse angles. Because just like obtuse, for a right angle to work, the opposite has to be bigger. Which side is the opposite? B is the opposite. Is it bigger? No. Oh, so my answer is? No triangle again. All right, let's go to number four. Um, I have two sides and one angle. Once again, there's a match. That means we have? Side side angle. Chris, be paying attention. Start answering. Because that way I know you're awake and I know you're going to be able to do this mental process yourself on quizzes and tests. Because um, without this mental process, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. This is how to think it through. I've got two angles, one side. Oh, automatically law of sides. I've got two sides, one angle. Is that side angle side or is it side side angle? Because you're going to approach them very differently. Well, this one I have a match, so that means it is class side side, side side angle. I look at the angle and I notice, by the way, the only side side angle is the only time you even have to worry about the angle. Anything else you don't worry about. It's just side side angle because it's the weird one. But side side angle, I've got what kind of angle? Obtuse. Obtuse angle. And uh, for an obtuse angle to work, what has to be true? Opposite's got to be bigger. Which one's the opposite? A on number four is the opposite because it matches the angle. Is the opposite bigger? Yes. Yes, 15 is bigger than 6.0, which means I do get a triangle, which means now I'm finally going to put the law of signs on the board. I've got my A over the sine of angle A equals B over the sine of angle B equals C over the sine of angle C. What do I solve for first, Ethan? Talk me through while you do it on your calculator. 6.0 times sine 120 equals, and then we divide it by 15. Good. You take our sign. Perfect. 20.26. There's two six eights, so 20. That's only one six eight. Uh, uh, 20 point. 20 point degrees. So there's our answer for B. Did y'all have 20 point degrees for B? Now we got to use the exact value though, and of course the 120 to get angle C. And we get? I'm asking him. You've already done it, hopefully. I didn't get it right. Oh, okay, never mind. Right. You can go ahead and redo it then as well. 39.73, blah, blah, blah. Again, two sig figs. Uh, 40. 40. All right, Chris, are you keeping up? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how you got that. You got the 20 point. Yeah, yeah, All right. So we're going to take 180 minus the 120 minus 20.26, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I didn't do 20. Gotcha. Okay. So that's going to leave us with the 40. Now we're going to use this number, though, not the 40, but the 39.73 that should still be on our calculator to finally find the last side. And uh, walk me through this, Chris. What will I do to find side C? Once we've got the 39.73 on the calculator. 15 times 39.7. Times the sine. sine of the 30. Yeah, that's going to mess you up if you don't. Times the sine of 39.73, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you get 9.587. And then what you're going to do? Did, did you tell us? We try this again. 39.73, blah, blah, blah. Take the sine times 15. Okay, now I've got it. I don't know what was wrong before. Okay, we're good now. Okay, keep going. All right, then you're going to divide by the sine of 120. All right, good. And you're going to take our sign. No, you're not. No, just the sine of 120. And you get 11.80. And it uh, looks like two sig figs, so we'll say uh, 11. Do we get these three answers, you two? All right, and then you gentlemen figuring it out. We're good to go. All right, let's take a look at numero cinco. And um, I see two sides, one angle. angle, and there is a match, which means it's side side. side side angle. Believe me, by the time we're done with this, you're going to hope it doesn't match, so we can do the other way, but it does match, so it's side side angle, which means we now have to look at the angle, and the angle is a right, right. right angle. I like right angles, because the only way it can work is if the opposite is bigger. bigger. What's the opposite? 
B. Is it bigger? Oh, so we do have a triangle. Um, so law of sines. And so we'll say A over the sine of A equals 1,962 over the sine of 90 degrees equals 1,252.2 over the sine of angle C. What do we solve for first, Chris? Uh, I'd, I'd solve for sine C first. All right, and uh, Ethan's doing it with me now. And when he does, he takes the arc sign, and he gets what angle? 39.65. Good, 39.65, blah, blah, blah. We'll round that off to, uh, looks like we'll say two six figs. 40 point degrees. All right, then we'll use that to help get angle A, which is? We got these two angles. Oh, yeah. We just gotta get A. I assume you have got the 39.64. The 50.34. We'll round that off and say 50 more. Still good. Uh -oh, okay, double checking. And then we'll use that. Well, we'll use this technically. And uh, we'll solve for side A. And get what? Okay, so we got the sine of the 50.34. Oh, uh, I did not take the sine. Uh, okay, that's the problem. That's why your answer is huge. Sine of 50.34, blah, 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 whatever it was. If you put it in the memory, you're saved. If you didn't, which I didn't, I cheated. I just went off the what was on the screen. Uh, times the 1,962 divided by the sine of 90. 1,510. 1,510.44, blah, blah, blah. How many sig figs on the side class? Four, four. Four. We either four or five, so we'll cut it off at four, and we'll cut it right there. 1,510 was our side A. Did we get that for side A? All right, questions on these? Yeah, I don't know what happened on the before. I think I just made some more stuff. All right. Well, let me jumble them up now. Set your books aside. I've got four problems for you. And instead of being in sections where, okay, I know this is side side angle, and I know this is good, I'm going to mix them up. And uh, you're going to have to process what to do. Good news for you right now, everything is still law of signs. That's not going to be, that's not going to stay true for the whole chapter. But for now, you already know everything is law of signs. Two seats, solve these triangles. If you can't get a triangle, just write no triangle. I don't know if I have any of those because I don't have the answers here, but um, I do know none of these are two, none of them should be two triangles. If they are, I miscopied something.
these. I'll start putting the answers up. You can continue working, and then as I finish one, you can check your answers and see how we did. Questions on the first one? Pause for a moment, check your answers. I continue working. second one properly. It was one of those more work ones, unfortunately, but it ends up being a no triangle. We get that? on YouTube here and weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. That is not my students in here. I am not torturing them. They are K3 students on the other side of the wall, and three-year-olds just make a lot of noise and whine a lot. Jamie, good to go. Andy Thanos is good to go. 
All right. We'll tell you what. We're going to save the two triangle for next week. We'll save that for Monday. Now let's take a quiz over just this material. Get your quarter off to a great start. Clear your desk. Except for a clean sheet of paper, pencil, and a calculator. Clean sheet of paper, pencil, and calculator. Everything else away. Seems like we've got a good handle on this. So it should be a really good quiz for us. First of all, stay at the top of your paper. Along with today's date, which is 1722. I don't know if this is your first quiz in a quarter or not, but 17, no, I had an English quiz. Okay, 1722, today's date. And this is quiz 24. Quiz 24. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to end the video once we start the quiz. I'll write the homework on the board. Just pause it while you take your quiz, and you can copy the homework down when you're finished. Students here, of course, will write the homework down when they're finished with their quiz also. Quiz 24. Just five problems on here. For each problem, I've given you three pieces of information about a triangle. You, if you can, solve the triangle. If there's no triangle form, simply write no triangle. For the sides of the triangles, round to the appropriate number of significant figures. And for angles on this one, we're going to round to the nearest whole angle. So if you'll just be flexible there, angles, let's just do whole angle, and then sides, we'll do sig figs. All right, you may begin. 